What are we doing here, hon? We're going fisheye on this one. This is our three week, almost exactly to the day, of our zucchini till versus no till, mulch versus no mulch um, update. And uh, yeah, I think you guys are gonna be pretty interested in seeing what's going on. Um, there's some uh, pretty cool stuff going on. Very cool stuff. Okay, so quick recap. Uh, June 15th, this was just grass. Nice little monoculture here, as you guys can see. And uh, we turned it into, on your right hand side, a one-time disturbance lasagna um, tilled bed. And then on your left hand side, we just did our classic lasagna cardboard, little bukashi, little coffee grounds, adorable amounts. Um, and then some uh, very suspect um, compost. Now on your right hand side, we did also add some of the um, compost um, as well and, and, and tilled that in. So um, yeah, we'll uh, show you guys the results here yeah. so far. In terms of the mulching, Jason has four treatments. One with nothing, one with wood chips, because they're free. Uh, one with dried grass, so he mowed the lawn and then dried the grass out very good before he put it on. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we have coffee chaff that we got from the guy who roasts coffee here in Springfield. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so let's get in there and compare some stuff. One thing we wanted to mention was kind of the rough start that these guys had. So we did start them as seedlings and we hardened them off. We put them out here and then it got real hot. The temptation was to try to figure out some way to shade them with some shade cloth, but we decided, forget it. Let's just see what happens. And as you can see, they have pulled through. They've really taken hold and they look great now, even though before they looked quite sad. Okay, so as we mentioned three weeks ago, we built this uh, bed on your left lasagna style, the way we've always built our beds in the last two years. Um, basically no disturbance, uh, no till, and uh, laid some compost on top. The, the beds on your right, uh, we actually tilled in and we just wanted to see, um, one, because we've never done it before, um, just the differences in potentially growth, the differences in pest pressure, um, and whatever else we can learn this summer because uh, yeah, we're really new with this stuff and uh, just figured it was a great way to, to learn. The other thing I did was create a living pathway, which was a heck of a lot of work, but uh, I'm super stoked that uh, we did that. It's, uh, it's pretty cool, uh, the bees really like it and it might be why we're seeing a bit of difference in the two beds as well. So we'll see, see how it goes. Okay, so here's a really good example. This is a uh, golden egg squash in the no-till uh, lasagna bed. Um, we planted this and uh, mulched it with, uh, with wood chips, which we'll, we'll get to later. But as you can see, it's growing really well, and uh, yeah, we're super happy with it. So let's go check out the one uh, in the, the one-time tillage bed. Okay, so this is the exact same plant, golden egg. Uh, planted at the exact same time with the exact same mulch um, around it. And you can see it's, it's quite a bit bigger. It already has uh, some fruit coming. And as you can see, maybe because of the living pathway with the clo clover, there's a lot more um, insect activity here. And uh, maybe a reason why these are, we're getting most of our, our early fruits on this side as opposed to the uh, the no dig side. Um, yeah, I don't know if you guys have any thoughts on that, but um, we really appreciate whatever uh, you guys think. So, Super all right, awesome. so to quickly wrap up on the till versus no till, we left two areas for two plants uncovered, no mulch. And um, one, one big detriment that you can see is that the amount of splashback that happens when we get our heavy, heavy rains here, um, you can see that these plants uh, get much more splashback because the mulch isn't dissipating the force of the raindrops. So um, that's uh, one thing. The other really interesting thing that happened is for some reason, and this is a crazy theory that maybe you guys can help me with, there's much more weed pressure on the no dig side. And, and that is mainly due to the poor quality compost 
but we use poor quality compost on the till side and um, there's essentially no weeds. Now, <clears throat> one thing that's happened is that our herd of uh, pesticides, which we call sparrows, love the tilled side. They come in, they take dirt baths, and they are eating what we suspect is weed seeds and uh, bugs, beneficial and pests. So it's been really interesting just to kind of watch the, uh, the differences. Now, again, there's not much weeds. It would take us two minutes to, to, to weed out the no-dig side, but it's just an interesting kind of um, side observation, if you will, um, that we're seeing. And um, yeah, helping out the sparrows, they're helping out us. Um, it's pretty awesome. Okay, so now onto the, the mulches. And I really wanna thank Sandra from Nano Worms. I got to spend a lot of time in her garden uh, this spring. She uh, mulches everything with wood chips. And um, the lack of weeds really got me thinking on, on the mulches. So um, with that in mind, we really wanted to mulch down here. We have access to free, really high quality wood chips, double ground. So um, we did, three different applications. We did, because of Kat's mother and her awesome work, we did the roost stout method, which is just grass clippings. Then we did wood chips. The majority of this is wood chip because I think that's really the direction we wanna go. Um, no weed seeds, very high quality stuff. And then we did chaff from, it's a byproduct from roasting coffee, um, just to see. And uh, then we did nothing. And um, yeah, there's been some interesting things happening. Okay, we're down on the, the tilled side and this is just the grass mulch um, that we used. Um, it went on quite thick. It was very, very dry when we put it on. Um, so we're not seeing any ill effects of that. Um, you can see how clean the plants are, how good they look. And uh, another interesting thing is you can see actually where the worms and other organisms are pulling the material down. There's a bunch of little um, holes for them and you can see how nice, oh, actually getting a living root from one of the squashes, but how nice this material is becoming. Now it's a good mix of clay, sand and silt um, with a little bit of um, organic matter from the compost. but. Um, again, really nice material, and when it's mulched, um, it's definitely performing really well. All right, wood chips, again, just awesome, awesome. The more we use wood chips, the more we question whether the wood chips are in the right spot, um, if they should be in the pathways or if they should actually be in the beds, because this material, this clay break eats it, just eats it alive. And as you can see, again, oh, I'm getting live roots. Um, very, very nice, um, broken down. Tons of silt and, and clay particles um, and sand in there. But as you can tell, the, the plants are doing really, really well. And the other super exciting spot part is, our first Illinois, what is this? Zucchini? Yeah. Zucchini. Awesome. I need to find some zucchini recipes. You do? Yeah, we're gonna have issues here. So, let's go. Okay, so here we are at the uh, the chaff, which again is a byproduct of roasting. As you can see, it, it creates quite a nice um, mulch layer uh, between. Now, we, we like this stuff, but because of its um, uh, lack of accessibility for us to get lots, it's probably something we won't do long term. Um, but I definitely have some ideas on how to use this um, in seed starting. But again, you can see very little splashback on the plants, except interestingly where I didn't put chaff, you can see a bunch. And the material here is actually quite a bit wetter, which is interesting. Again, I'm taking lots of live roots, which is probably not the best, but um, yeah, really, really nice soil there as well. So let's tuck him back in. All right, so we're in the, the last little section here, and this is where we uh, left it bare, no mulch, no nothing. Um, just tilled, planted in. Um, as you can definitely see, there's a lot more um, splashback on the plants, 
they don't look quite as happy. I mean, they still look quite good to me, but um, well, the big difference that we see is that when it when it's dry, it's really, really dry. And then when we get our rain events, you can see the difference in the soil. Um, it, it is much, much wetter. And when it's dry, it's much, much drier. Once we put the mulch down after about a week, we noticed a huge difference in our watering. Um, yeah, we've had a lot of rain in the last five, six days, but since we put the mulch down, I think we've watered once in the last two weeks. So um, the mulch has just been fantastic and something that we'll uh, continue to do. Um, as far as pest pressure, we don't really know yet, um, but the, the sparrows and the other birds seem to be taking care of, of most of it. Again, it's early days and uh, we'd be super interested in what you guys thought, but uh, awesome observation so far. It's been really, uh, really cool. All right, apologies. We got one last thing. This is the uh, no-till, just compost as uh, mulch on top. You can see there's a little bit more weed pressure, but um, it's not really a big deal. Um, but the, the big difference with this one is that you can see this soil is much, much better. Um, so I think one thing that we can learn from this little bit is that if we do till, do a one-time disturbance, that we definitely have to protect the soil with uh, with something, or it'll it'll get way too dry and turn to brick, or way too wet and just turn to uh, a clay ball. So um, yeah, that's a, another kind of interesting um, observation as to what's going on. So thanks for watching our video about mulching and tilling versus no tilling and the different kinds of mulch. It's still early days for us, but like Jason was just talking about the idea that tilling, for example, has consequences mm -hmm. in terms of the mulch that you might want to put on or whether you put mulch on. Not putting mulch on has benefits, but also um, some detriments to not doing it. And so there's a balance, like what are you trying to achieve? Maybe it would depend on the kind of plant that you're growing in particular. Right. Um, so just some interesting observations. It would, I think it would depend a lot on your circumstances, what you yeah. decide to do. But this has been really interesting for us to see these differences and to be able to do till versus no-till and also the different kinds of mulches, having access to all the different mulches has been really great. So we are learning some good lessons and then we'll know better maybe how to apply things in the future. Yeah, and um, along those lines, just want to thank you guys for, for all the comments. I've been going back to some of our old videos and it is just a plethora of awesome information. Um, we just can't thank you guys enough for that because uh, we're new. Uh, this is my third year gardening and um, your comments have been so helpful. Um, encouragement's great, but some um, some criticism or some um, helpful suggestions, helpful suggestions uh, we're totally down for. So. We want to thank you guys a ton, and um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. So far, there's no no uh, sprays being laid down, and uh, we hope to continue that way. We hope the birds kind of help us manage stuff. Um, but yeah, just thank you guys so much. Yeah, and have an awesome day. Stay awesome. Okay, Ooh. so quick recap. <laughs> 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 a recrap. A recap. Uh, <clears throat> well, so we'll see. See how it goes. Bird.